This video is about calculating free cash flow to firm using financial statements. So we have different formulas for free cash flow to firm. One of these formulas is free cash flow to firm is equal to net income plus interest multiplied by one minus tax rate plus depreciation minus capital expenditure minus change in net operating working capital. So from our income statement, we have net income of 4.9 at back interest of 2.7 multiplied by one minus tax rate, which is 30% plus depreciation of 10. Then we need to calculate capital expenditure, CAPEX. We have two ways to calculate capital expenditure. One of them is BBE gross at time T minus BBE gross of T minus one, which is the previous period, previous year. Therefore here, we will look at our balance sheet. So we'll get here BBE gross in year 2019 minus BBE gross of the previous year. So here we will have 70 minus 70, which will give us zero. Or we can calculate CAPEX using BBE net. So our formula for CAPEX is BBE net at time T minus BBE net of the previous period, which is T minus one plus annual depreciation from income statement. So if we look at the balance sheet, our BBE net at year 2019 is 50 minus BBE net of the previous year, which is 2018 60. And then we need to add back annual depreciation from our income statement, which is 10. So it will be 50 minus 60 plus 10, it will give us zero. So we will put here minus zero. Then we need to calculate minus a change in net operating working capital. So this means that we need to look at the balance sheet and we choose only operating items, which means we need to get the change. A change, it means that the difference between two years. So we need to get our operating current assets minus operating current liabilities. And for operating current assets, I need to get this year minus the previous year. Minus, do the same with operating current liabilities this year minus the previous year. So if we look at our balance sheet, we know that our operating current assets are account receivables and inventories, and our operating current liabilities is only accounts payable in this example. So what do we mean by operating current assets or operating current liabilities? These are the items that are used directly in the operation, which means we don't receive or pay any interest or return for these items. Therefore, we will say here, our change in net operating working capital, we will get account receivables at time T minus account receivables of the previous period, plus inventory at time T minus inventory of the previous period, minus accounts payable at time T minus accounts payable of the previous period. So we'll get here, change in net operating working capital is equal to 26 minus 15, the account receivables items from the balance sheet, plus 28 minus 20, the inventory items from the balance sheet, minus 15 minus five, which is the accounts payable items. And this will give us a change in net operating working capital of nine. So in our formula here, we will say minus nine. So this will give us free cash flow to firm of 7.79. Another formula for free cash flow to firm is EBIT multiplied by one minus T, which we call it after tax operating profit, add back depreciation minus capital expenditure minus change in net operating working capital. So from our income statement, we can get EBIT. So we have here EBIT equal to 9.7 multiplied by one minus tax rate, which is 30%. Add back depreciation, which is 10 minus CAPEX, which we calculated earlier is zero minus change in net operating working capital, which is nine. This will give us exactly the same free cash flow to firm, which we calculated earlier, 7.79. Another formula we could use is Free cash flow to firm is equal to EBITDA multiplied by one minus tax rate plus depreciation multiplied by tax rate minus capital expenditure minus change in net operating working capital. So from our income statement, we will get EBITDA, which is 19.7 multiplied by one minus tax rate of 30%. Then we need to say plus depreciation. We have a depreciation of 10 multiplied by our tax rate, which is 30% minus CAPEX of zero minus change in net operating working capital, which is nine. So this will give us free cash flow to firm of 7.79. Another formula to calculate free cash flow to firm is operating cash flow plus interest multiplied by one minus tax rate minus capital expenditure. So we will get our operating cash flow from a statement of cash flows. We know that in statement of cash flow, we have three categories, cash flow from operations, cash flow from financing, cash flow from investment. So we will get net cash flow from operations. Here is 5.9. So we'll say here it's 5.9 
plus get the interest, our interest is 2.7, multiplied by 1 minus tax rate, which is 30%, minus capital expenditure, in our example here it's equal to 0, so this will give us free cash flow to firm of 7.79. Another formula to calculate free cash flow to firm will be a change in cash balance plus net payment to debt holders plus net payment to shareholders because we know that free cash flow to firm is the cash flow available to both creditors and shareholders, the cash flow available to both debt holders and equity holders. Therefore, we get a change in cash balance from a statement of cash flows and this will be our net cash flow which is the summation of net cash flow from operation plus net cash flow from investment plus net cash flow from financing. So from our statement of cash flow, our net cash flow here is equal to 1. So we'll put here a change in cash balance is equal to net cash flow is equal to 1. Then we need to calculate net payment to debt holders. So this means that if we wear the hat of the debt holder, so what will be the cash flow they will receive from the debt holder perspective, from a creditor's perspective? Therefore, we will say here that the net payment to debt holders, they will receive interest, and we know that interest is tax deductible, and that's why we multiply by 1 minus t, minus net debt. So what we mean by net debt, if they're going to issue in new debt, minus debt repayment. Therefore, we will say that our formula is equal to net interest multiplied by 1 minus tax rate, minus, how do we calculate net debt from our balance sheet? We need to choose our non-operating liabilities at time t minus non-operating liabilities of the previous period. So we will get here interest from our income statement. So we have here interest of 2.7 multiplied by 1 minus tax rate of 30%. Minus we need to choose our net operating liabilities. So let's go to the balance sheet. If we look at the liability side, current liabilities and long-term liabilities, we will highlight only the non-operating liabilities. So what I mean by non-operating liabilities? These items are used indirectly in operation. What I mean by the word indirectly? It means that these items will incur a return or an interest. And that's why notes payable, current portion of long-term debt, long-term loans, and long-term bonds are an examples of non-operating liabilities. Therefore, I will take it in year 2019 minus 2018, and I will get the summation for these four variables. Therefore, our formula here will be we will get 9.1 minus 4, which is notes payable, plus 6 minus 6, which is the change in current portion of long-term debt, plus 24 minus 30, which is the change in long-term loans, plus 25 minus 25, which is the change in long-term bonds. And this will give us net payment to debt holders equal to 2.79. Then we need to calculate net payment to shareholders. So if you look from the shareholders' perspective, what do you receive? So, when a company makes a profit, as shareholders, we receive dividends minus net equity. What do we mean by net equity? This is shares issuance. So, if we issue a new share, so this means that for us as owners, as shareholders, we need to pay for it. So, it's cash outflow. And then, this is between bracket, minus, and minus minus will be positive share repurchase. What do we mean by share repurchase? If the company will buy shares back from us. So this means that the company will take the share and give us money as a shareholder. So it's cash inflow. So how are we going to calculate the net equity from our balance sheet? We need to look at the contributed capital or issued capital and get the difference between two years. So our formula will be dividends minus get contributed capital at time t minus contributed capital at the previous period. So here we will get dividends in our example here, it's equal to 4 in year 2019. And then I need to look at the balance sheet and I need to get our contributed capital in 2019 minus contributed capital of the previous year, which is 2018. So we'll say here 4 minus, open bracket, 29 minus 29. This will give us 4. So now we can substitute in our formula here as our free cash flow to firm is equal to a change in cash balance, which is called net cash flow plus net payment to debt holders, which is 2.79, plus net payment to shareholders, which is 4. And this will give us 7.79. As you see here, we used five different formulas of free cash flow to firm, and each formula gave us exactly the same number of free cash flow to firm, which is 7.79.